Artificial Condition is the second book in the Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells. Well, the second novella, really, but we don't have to be pedantic about it. And when I picked it up, I expected I would enjoy myself, but I didn't know just how much I would love it. If you've seen uh, the previous video on my channel, you would have something of an idea that I did indeed enjoy All Systems Red, which begins the adventures of who else but Murderbot. It didn't leave in me the need, that desperate yearning to continue on the part of this phenomenal little bot. Well. I say little, but he is actually a towering, or it is actually a towering individual, replete with energy weapons and a magnificent amount of anxiety and unwillingness to communicate with human beings. So let's go into Artificial Condition and discuss it, shall we? Murderbot, antisocial connoisseur of media and rogue security unit, or SecUnit for short, is looking into the truth behind a tragedy that it was a part of, a mass murder of humans it recalls in only the vaguest of shapes. The incident at Ganaka Pit has long weighed on Murderbot's mind, and once it comes into contact with art, the two come up with the perfect plan to solve this mysterious episode of the autonomous sec unit's life. All they need is to pass Murderbot off for a human and get him employed en route to the Ravi Hyrule mining facility. Only, no job that involves Murderbot ever turns easy. Art or asshole research transport, patent pending, is an artificial consciousness in charge of a long distance transport ship Murderbot hitches a ride on. So perhaps it's more correct to say that Art is the ship itself. Art struggles to interface with humans and does not understand their emotions too well at all. Murderbot, with its interest in human media, turns out the perfect intermediary for the understanding Art is so desperate to gain. The friendship these two forge is not unlike that between bickering siblings, who nevertheless help and even like each other. Throughout the novel, I couldn't escape from the juxtaposition of Murderbot's internal voice, social anxiety that makes it among the most relatable characters in contemporary science fiction, and its outward appearance, which is akin to the looks of a space marine, at least in my mind. You know that um, look, short cropped hair, you know the look. If you're a nerd, you know the look, short cropped hair, thick neck, the physique of someone who could turn you into mincemeat with their fists. Someone you'd never for a moment consider as self-conscious of social interactions as Murderbot reveals itself to be. I had more than a few laughs at that discrepancy between internal and external worlds. If there's one lesson you should take from this series, it is that self-consciousness is in no way a reflection of an individual's capability. There is an unmistakable competence to murder bots, plans and split-second decision-making, which put me in mind of Jack Reacher, of all people. Of course, comparison between the two at the basis of personality are pointless, but the first-person narration, the unwillingness of both characters to get involved before they, of course, get dragged into a situation well outside their control, as well as the curt, abrupt and oftentimes brutal violence they leave behind once they enter into action. I have reason to think that fans of Lee Child's Reacher would find Murderbot the perfect vessel for a foray into science fiction. As to the revelation of that mystery at the heart of artificial condition, I found it to be terribly rewarding. It ties up perfectly with the secondary plot of the novella, which tells of a trio of human researchers attempting to get back precious data from a corp ready to kill them rather than give that data up. And if you don't think it'll get messy, think again, ye faithful ones. Martha Wells has got me. I hate to admit it, but I'm hooked. I'm invested and it's off to the library with me to get the next few novellas. Think I'll even buy the novel once I get to it. I will say, however, these hardcovers, they are 
prohibitively expensive. I'm, I'm so glad my library has stocked them up. And of course you could get the ebooks, but buy a hardback cover of this if you're a collector. It's going to set you up $17, $22.50 Canadian dollars. Canadians have dollars. <sighs> and of course it, it's... It's a lot of money for something this short, because I think I read it in less than two hours. Maybe two hours and a half tops. And only because I kept getting distracted by people chatting with me on Messenger and WhatsApp. The price point would definitely be a problem for me if my library hadn't had these stacked. But that said, the novella is very much worth investing the few hours of time into. It is entertaining, a little pulpy, and more than once, downright laugh out loud funny. You should check it out. You know what else you should do? That's right, smash that subscribe button, like that video, ring the bell for notifications, and whatever else it is that YouTube people always want you to do when you're watching a YouTube video. Thanks for sticking with me, kid. And I'll see you next time. Bye!